Everybody, thanks for coming today uh, out to the surge barrier. Uh, we're very uh, pleased to welcome the new Chief of Engineers and the Commanding General of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Lieutenant General Tom Bostick. Uh, this is General Bostick's first trip to New Orleans, and on his first trip here, uh, we're happy to have him be able to sign a Chief's Report uh, for the Barataria Base and Barrier Shoreline Project. What a Chief's Report does is it says, the studying is done. And we're now on to designing this project. And so we're happy to have him here today, not only for his first trip, but to sign his first Chief's Report as the Chief on this particular trip. I should highlight that this project will restore almost 3,000 acres of dune and marsh in the Barataria Basin, which is critically needed. And as the state of Louisiana and the United States of America loses over a football field every hour, this project is sorely needed uh, to protect the coastline. When we talk about coastal restoration in the state of Louisiana, we talk about uh, a stool that kind of sits on three legs. One of those legs is diversions in, 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 uh, of fresh water and sediment. One of those legs is marsh creation. And one of those legs is barrier island restoration. And this project does, in fact, get exactly at that, barrier island restoration. So with that, I'd like to introduce uh, the Chief of Engineers and the Commanding General of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Lieutenant General Tom Boston. Sir. Well, Ed, uh, thanks for that kind introduction. It is truly an honor for me to be here today, and I think it's appropriate to sign my first Chief's Report here in this location in New Orleans and also on this surge barrier. Uh, this is a billion-dollar project. Uh, it's one part of the $14.6 billion that, that the nation decided to invest in this area post-Katrina. And I think for the core team, along with its local partners, state partners, uh, federal partners, and all of those non-governmental organizations, they came together as a team and they delivered on time, under budget, and into an extraordinarily high quality with this, this particular project and many other projects uh, along this part of the country, which makes a wonderful system that will provide the kind of uh, risk reduction to the hurricane storm surge that we might see in the future. Uh, the, the Barataria Basin uh, project is going to be wonderful for this area as well. I think, uh, as Ed Fleming had pointed out, it really gets at uh, coastal restoration, the ecosystem restoration that's important in the work that we're doing, as well as it provides some economic benefit. Uh, it provides some protection for endangered species, so it's a win-win all the way around. I just want to thank uh, Governor Jendel, Senator Vitter, Senator Landro, and all of the members of the team uh, from national uh, down to local in working together to make sure that we provide the best uh, in risk reduction for any possible hurricanes that may come in this area while also looking out for the endangered species and providing for the economic well-being of uh, this important part of the country. And with that, I'd like to introduce Senator Vitter. Thank you very much, General and Colonel, and it's a, a real pleasure and honor to be here with you. When I heard you were coming down uh, to your first visit to Southeast Louisiana as uniform head of the Corps, I really wanted to be here to be part of this important visit as well as to see this important signing. And I appreciate uh, your leadership, and I look forward to a great working relationship, General and uh, Colonel, with you at the local level. I think it is very appropriate, as was suggested, that we're on uh, the biggest engineered, designed, built project in the history of the Corps, the biggest man-made structure, and the Corps is signing a chief engineer's report for ecosystem restoration. Because to protect us in this area, we need both. It's not either or but clearly we need both. We need enormous coastal restoration and broader ecosystem restoration, like in the Barataria Basin, the project that the general is signing off on today. And closer to populated areas, we need large built structures like this, walls, levees, etc. And we've learned often through painful experience that it's not either or. So I'm certainly determined with Mary, with the rest of our federal delegation, with the Jindal administration and, and Garrett Graves and his leadership, to, to see that get done and to see it done the right way. 
and we'll partner with the core, we'll applaud the core when appropriate, we'll ask a bunch of questions and push hard for a bunch of revisions also when we think it's appropriate, but these are all important steps forward in the right direction. This enormous structure we're standing on, this barrier island, Barataria Bay ecosystem restoration, which we're embarking on now. So thanks, General, for your leadership. All right, sir. Let's sign a teacher report. Please get General, what does this say about the, the Corps' priorities? And, you know, people have traditionally thought of the Corps as building structures, and certainly you've been involved in, in wetland restoration for some time now, but uh, this is a, a pretty large dollar amount. So I'm, I'm curious, and then I'm curious what your own personal priorities are in terms of directing the Corps in this, in this area, because there are those who believe that the one big part of what the one lake is missing is the restoration of the, the marsh and the wetlands and the islands. It's a great question, and I think we as a nation, uh, from our national level down to our local level, need to work together to sort out what those priorities should be. Uh, I think uh, this is what we're saying is a win-win situation. It's not an either-or, as Senator Ritter said. Uh, we need both, and we need the ecosystem restoration. We need the economic development. We need the protection of light uh, with the storm, storm storage protection that we receive. So I think it's all of those. And it's a balancing of those priorities against the resources that we have. And I'm committed to working at the national level and with the states and the local level to ensure that we balance those priorities across uh, across the country. Uh, Sen uh, General, we're, we're sitting on a structure that's built for a 100-year storm. Uh, the Corps was given uh, three tasks. Y'all have completed two of them. The third task was to come up with a plan to, to uh, deal with the potential for storms that are larger than uh, uh, or the same size or larger than a Katrina or a Jupiter or a greater storm. How are you guys going to be working to get that last piece of the, uh, of the puzzle in place in context with the state's master plan for coastal restoration and protection? Well, I'll let uh, Ed talk to the specifics, but the first priority, is, as the President said when he came down here, is to make sure that we've got protection against a 100-year storm, that we've got a system. And I think the first time we truly have a system uh, that can give us uh, the risk reduction against a 100-year storm. Uh, and, and then we've got to move on from that and, and continue to improve all along this, uh, this coastline. And Ed, if you've got some other things you'd like to add. There's two things about this project that make it very unique. The first thing is, is this project is in fact part of the state master plan. And so we've worked very closely with the state of Louisiana uh, and with the other uh, local sponsors to be able to make sure that this is a project that is a priority of all them. Uh, the second thing is, is this gets exactly at a theory that we have talked about for a long time and is starting to come to fruition, which is multiple lines of defense. And so when you have a barrier island, like Barataria Basin Barrier Shoreline, which is composed of two islands, and you have marshland and wetland creation that takes the energy out from underneath the storm and knocks the storm down before it gets to this particular structure. Um, so this is an unbelievable project that has uh, lots of different benefits. Thanks for the money for, these, for, for the new Barataria projects. Uh, the, you know, these projects will go through the typical appropriations process. Uh, right now we're talking about uh, signing this chief's report, uh, getting this sent over to the ASA's office and then over to OMB, um, and then uh, uh, we'll follow the appropriations process when we see it. Senator, if, I'm, if, I, if I can follow up on the, the funding, you know, it's, it's been difficult to pry $16 million out of the House, which appears as though it might happen. Um, what, what is your sense of the mood in Congress for restoration efforts and continued funding in the future, and if and then what does it say about the $50 billion estimate for the master plan if there aren't additional sources um, besides the OCS money, besides some theoretical potential BP fine? I guess what I'm asking is what what is your outlook as you look down?
down the road for funding these types of projects long term? Well, look, if we only depend on appropriated dollars through the normal federal appropriation process, we won't get there. We won't get there in the best of times. We certainly won't get there in very tough fiscal times like we have now. That's why we have to come with other things like revenue sharing. We got that a few years ago. Of course, for that to be meaningful, we need to get the Gulf up and running again and producing a lot more energy because you can have 100% revenue share. If it's 100% of zero, you have nothing. Uh, that's why we need to look at opportunities as we are with the BP disaster through the Restore Act, through the WERDA, a NERDA process, excuse me. So we're doing all those things to put together a package that can get us there. But I think the premise or suggestion or question is if we just are always just walking through the normal federal appropriation process, it's going to be tough to impossible. We need to do other things with some automatic flows of funds like revenue share. Things in addition to what, what's on the books now or the potential with, with Well, the I think we have all the projects on the books now, uh, but we need to use all those revenue streams to fund them. We'll take one more, unless we don't have any more, then we won't take any. Uh, the, the project you hear about today is, yes. is a ways off. Uh, just in a general sense, everybody at the beginning of hurricane season always wants to know, seven years ago we were here, where are we now? Yeah. Just in a general sense. You know, when Hurricane Katrina hit, this structure that we're standing on did not exist. And we fought storm surge from Hurricane Katrina all the way down the intercoastal waterway and all the way down uh, the industrial canal. That cannot happen anymore. This structure that we're standing on today stops the storm surge from getting up and coming out of the city and stops at 13 miles out here, almost in Lake Warren. And so you can't compare uh, the structure and the system as it was during Hurricane Katrina as to what it is today. If you look behind us around St. Bernard Parish, there's a 32-foot high concrete steel reinforced T-wall. When Hurricane Katrina hit, what you had there was a 16-foot earthen lever. Those structures are almost not even comparable. And so we are much better off in the Greater New Orleans area today than we've ever been. Uh, and it's because of the hard work and the partnership uh, at all levels, local, state, and federal. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate you coming back. Thank you.